What up, everybody? Instruct the Beats back again here with another fraction lesson. Today, we're going to be looking at whole numbers as fractions. So let's build it on up and look at our objective today. Our objective today. Today, we will be able to understand that whole numbers can be written as fractions and recognize those patterns by using unit fractions. So we have a whole video on unit fractions if you need a lesson on it, right? But here's a quick overview, all right? A unit fraction is one equal part of the whole. If I have one whole and split it into four equal parts, I have made fourths, right? Each of those pieces now has a value of one fourth. One fourth is my unit fraction. It is the building block of my whole. To make the whole, I would need four one fourths. Right? So that concept's going to be used later in our video, but let's review some math vocabulary. Right? So here we have a fraction, and we know that the top part of a fraction is called the numerator, and the bottom part of our fraction is called the denominator. Okay? The denominator is how many pieces one whole is split into. Okay? That's going to be a very important concept as well today. And our numerator tells us the number of unit fractions that make up our fraction. Okay, and again, we have another lesson on that, but this is just a little bit of a review because we're gonna be using these terms in our lesson today. Let's tell an instructive story to help us understand what we're talking about today, okay? It's your birthday today and you order one whole pizza, right? But of course, you're not gonna eat the whole pizza by yourself, so you split it into eight equal pieces. You can see those right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I've already cut those for you. And it's only fair that they're equal pieces, right? Because we wanna share equally. So your unit fraction, right, each of these pieces is going to be worth one-eighth. So our unit fraction in this story is one-eighth because that's how much each of these pieces is worth, right? I split it into eight pieces, which means one of them would be one out of eight, okay? Now, this is not a trick question. How many slices would you need to make one whole pizza, right? Well, you would need eight. So if the whole cake is eaten, you could say you ate one whole, right? Or you could say you ate eight out of eight. And of course, after dinner, you want to eat a cookie, right? But for this one, you're not going to split it with eight people. You're only going to split it equally with three. And again, we have to share it equally. So I'm going to do my best to split this cookie up as equally as possible into three equal pieces, right? Which means my unit fraction be one out of three because each of these pieces would be worth one third. So if I wanted to build one whole cookie again, I would need three one thirds. So if I put three one thirds together, as you can see, that equals one whole, or that would be three out of three, right? My denominator is three because it's split into three total pieces, and I needed three unit fractions, which is what my numerator tells me, to make one whole cookie. So after dinner, you're gonna do some crafts. So you have this string right here and you need to cut it into six equal pieces for whatever craft you're doing. I don't know, I don't do crafts with strings, but I'm sure that'd be fun. Okay, so I'm gonna split this into six equal pieces, all right? And each of these, of course, would be worth one out of six. Our unit fraction is one six. Our denominator is six because we split it into six equal pieces and each of those pieces is worth one six. So if I wanted to put it back together to make one whole rope, right, I could say I had one whole rope or I could say that I had six six because my denominator is six, right? I had six equal pieces and my numerator needs to be six because I need six unit fractions to build that one whole. So we could say one whole or, I forgot my or right here, six six. Now let's just take this one step further. Let's say for some reason, you wanted to take your napkin from dinner. You wanted to pull a prank on your brother. So you split that napkin into a hundred pieces for him to pick up. I don't know why you do that, but let's say you did, right? So again, I'm not, I'm not gonna write all the unit fractions out because there's a hundred of them, but I, here's my one whole, right? And I split it into a hundred equal pieces. How many pieces would your brother have to pick up to pick up the whole napkin? And of course that would be 100 over 100 right? Your denominator tells you how many equal pieces you split your whole into, and he would need to pick up a hundred unit fractions to pick up the whole thing. So we could say that 
this right here is one whole or 100 one hundredths. What do you recognize about all the fractions that we said were equal to one whole? Hopefully you're seeing a pattern right here, right? Which leads us to our first pattern we want to recognize. When the numerator is the same as the denominator, the fraction is equal to one whole. So if your one whole pizza is split into eight equal pieces, you would need eight of them to say you ate one whole pizza, right? It's not tricky, but sometimes we don't think about it like that. So here we have a bunch of fractions. These are the typically the fractions that we'll be using in our lessons that the numerator is the same as the denominator, right? So two halves, I'm not gonna do this for all of them, but you, let's say you had a whole circle and you split it into two, right? You would need two unit fractions to make the whole, right? So what I do is I draw a one around this. Now, I don't draw a really good one because I don't wanna spend a lot of time on it. It kinda looks like a rectangle, but pretend like that's a one because we call these fractions big one. It's kind of like when you dress up for a costume party, right? Let's say you dress up as a vampire. Well, you're not really a vampire, you're really yourself. Well, the whole number one has dressed up like some fractions, right? And even though they look different, they all have the same value of one whole. If you split a brownie into six pieces and ate six of them, you ate one whole brownie. If you took that same brownie and split it into eight pieces, because you had to share it with more people, and you ate eight of them, you still ate one whole brownie. So I draw this little one around it to kind of remind myself and to remind my students that these fractions, although they are written as fractions, are all equivalent to one. And we call it the big one. So what if we had other whole numbers, right? Not just one, okay? So here we have three pizzas. I don't know why you want to eat them. There's nothing on them. It's just a plain circle. But here we have three pizzas, right? And we want to split each of them into three pieces. And again, I'm going to do my best. Thirds are kind of hard for me to be as equal as possible. If, I, if I'm a little off, let's per, just pretend like we shared these pizzas equally. We partitioned them into three equal pieces. There we go. And let's say I wanted one whole pizza. So we just learned that if we split our one whole pizza into three pieces, right, each of these would be worth one third. And of course, if you ate all three pizzas, that would be one whole or three thirds, right? If you say big one, so there's my one, okay, around my three thirds. Now, here's a misconception. This is what we need to remind ourselves about what a denominator means. Here you see nine pieces, but the denominator tells us how many total pieces one whole is split into. So this whole pizza is also split into thirds, which means each of these pieces are gonna have a value of one third, okay? And to make one whole pizza, right, that would be three thirds or a big one. And here we have one third again for each of these. It's my unit fraction, okay? So I'm gonna put another big one here, which would be three thirds. Now. We know one is equal to three thirds. What if I ate two whole pizzas together, right? Well, if each one is made up of three thirds, if I had two pizzas, that would mean I ate six thirds. And that goes back to what our definition of a numerator is. The numerator tells us the number of unit fractions needed to build the fraction we're talking about. So if I wanted two thirds, I would need one, two, three, four, five, six unit fractions. That's why my numerator is six. And my denominator would still be three because each whole is split into three equal pieces. Well, what if you wanted to have three whole pizzas, right? Well, if you had three whole pizzas, that would be nine thirds because you'd still have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine unit fractions that make up the fraction we're trying to build, which was three holes. So if we want to write three holes as a fraction, it would have to be nine thirds. So I'm gonna go ahead and write down one real quick, not as a big one, but just as a fraction, because I want you to see the pattern. Each hole that we added, we just added another three unit fractions, right? So if your unit fraction is one third, one hole will be three thirds, two holes will be six thirds, three holes will be nine thirds, right? So we're just skip counting by three is the pattern. So if you had four holes, that would be 12 thirds because you need another three unit fractions 
to build the next hole. So 9 thirds plus another three unit fractions would be 12 thirds. If you want to make five holes, that would be 15 thirds. You need 15 unit fractions to make five whole pizzas. So you can see the pattern of skip counting to see what fractions are equivalent to other holes. So using that pattern, let's take a look at this we do, okay? So you should be jotting this down in your notes with me as we go. It says 18 6 is equal to how many holes? Well, the first thing I need to recognize is my unit fraction, right? So if my denominator is 6, my unit fraction would be 1 6, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and just draw a hole. I'll do a rectangular hole right here, okay? And I'm going to split it into 6 equal pieces. And again, it's not going to be perfect, okay? But if I'm a little off, just pretend like we just partitioned it into equal parts. So my unit fraction obviously would be 1 6. So one whole, right, would be equal to 6 6, which is a big one, right? Your numerator is the same as your denominator, okay? So if we use the pattern we just talked about, two holes should be equal to 12 6 because I would need another six unit fractions to make another whole. Three holes would have to be equal to 18 6 because, again, I'd have to add another six unit fractions for my next hole. So I think 8, 6 is equal to 3 holes. But let's go ahead and draw it out and see if we're right using our area model. So here's another hole. And again, our holes should be the same size. So I'm going to do my best. Okay. I'm going to split this into 6 equal parts. I'm going to label each of them 1, 6. So you can see right here I have 12 unit fractions, which are made up 2 holes. So 12, 6 is correct. Let me draw my next hole right here. There we go and label my unit fractions. Each piece is worth 1 6. And here you can see I have three holes. How many unit fractions did I need to build those three holes? I had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. That's why my numerator is 18 because it tells you how many unit fractions you need to build the fraction you're talking about. And some of you again might be confused why the denominator is only 6 when you see 18 total pieces. You always have to remember that the denominator tells you how many total pieces one hole is split into. So this one hole was split into six pieces, this one hole was split into six pieces, and this one hole was split into six pieces. So that's why my denominator stays six. My unit fraction was one six, that's my building block, and I needed 18 of those to build three holes. So you can use the pattern or you could draw out an area model to help you. All right, so here's our you try problem. The question says, how many eighths would you need to make four whole brownies, okay? So you can either draw out four whole brownies and split it into the unit fractions and then count them, or you could use your unit fraction and recognize the patterns that we were talking about the last couple of problems to try to solve it that way. Either way you do it is fine as long as you try, right? It's okay to fail as long as you learn from it. So go ahead and pause the video, try it, and then push play to check your work. So hopefully you just paused it, and now we're checking it out. So first of all, I know my unit fraction is going to be 1 eighth, right? Because it said eighths. So each whole brownie that I draw, I'm going to need to split into eight pieces. And again, a little bit messy, right? But I know each of these pieces is worth 1 eighth, right? So I'm not going to go ahead and draw them all out because that would take me forever. I'm just going to label a couple of them so you can kind of see. So first of all, you know your denominator is going to be eight because that's how many each hole was split into. So what is the number of unit fractions you needed to build four whole brownies? So you have eight here, plus another eight, that's 16, plus another eight, that's 24, plus another eight, that would be 32 eighths is equal to four holes. Okay, if you didn't draw it out and you just used your pattern, you know that one eighth was your unit fraction, right? Which means one whole would be equal to eight eighths, which we call a big one. You could draw a one around it to kind of help you remember that. So now I know I'm just going to be skip counting by 8. So two holes would be 16 eighths, three holes would be 24 eighths, and then four holes would have been another eight unit fractions were needed. So that would have been 32 eighths. Either way you did it is fine. And this leads us to our key thought, right? Which is whole numbers can also be written as fractions by using our unit fraction knowledge. Thank you so much for checking us out today. We really appreciate you spending your time on Instructive Beats. We know there's lots of different options online. Check out our website, InstructiveBeats.com. Check out all our merchandise on our online store, which, which you can get to through our YouTube homepage. Again, thank you so much. 
Instructor Beats out.